الحمد لمن هداني لسنة العدنان محمد المختار وسيد الأطهار ف... What do you know about Islam, man? Are you Muslim already, or? No. All right. So you're ready for it, though. I can see it. <laughs> I feel it in you, bro. So uh, bring up the Majdari Bat channel. Yeah. So what do you believe right now? Uh, I believe in uh, one supreme being. OK, there you go. We got, we got that going. Yeah. So if you go to the playlist, that is, uh, check that out. We'll give you what books to buy. Do you believe in one supreme being that created us, that gave us purpose? He's not a man, he's not a woman, he's not a dog, he's not a, he's not a monkey to be worshipped and all that, no idols, that one great creator above all of us, right? You know, you know that's right, I got you on that one, right? That great supreme being wouldn't leave us without guidance, right? Like think about it, if you created something new, you made a new uh, technology, right? And that technology had never been seen, wouldn't you give some instructions how to use it? Wouldn't you use some kind of a way to tell people, hey, I made this, I know how it should be implemented. Don't put it in a microwave, don't throw it in the water, don't do this, don't do that. Do it this way, charge it this way, right? But Allah is our creator, He's above us, He's greater than us, He knows better. So do you think He would leave us without guidance? Yeah. So for guidance, He would send us messages, He would send us prophets, right? And that's why we believe in all the prophets, Abraham, Moses, Jesus, Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon them. From Adam all the way to Muhammad, we believe in all of them, right? You believe in them? Excellent. So if you believe in that one creator and you believe in those messengers, you're already Muslim. That's what a Muslim is, right? Someone right before you got converted. Yeah, we just, same thing. So this is, you're not even converting, you're reverting, you're coming back to your original state because you know in what we call fitra, your natural state. Like if you ever see somebody worshiping a, like I was in India and I saw these people worshiping a cow and the cow started urinating and these dudes ran up and started splashing that urine on them. And I was like, that's, that's crazy, that's nasty, right? I saw him worshiping a cow and I thought, you know what? That would be a barbecue on the weekend for us. We'd be, we'd be playing that, them steaks up. I right? can't worship that. Right? right you see, right, so right. I saw people worshiping snakes. Yeah. Like, I don't even like snakes. Man, you know, snake comes up to me, I'm smashing its head in, right? That's not God. I believe in a God that can't be killed, that can't be put on a cross, that can't be made into a white man or a black man or a Chinese man. I believe in a God that created all of us, loves us, guides us, sends us those prophets. Why is it that we find a similar message in all of the messages of prophets? Worship one creator, don't worship idols. Why? Because all of that's from the same God. Right. But you know, people came in, King James came in, other people came in, started translating things up, moving things out. Let me give you an example. This is the Bible, right? Uh, you can look these verses up yourself, right? This is an Exodus. Now, according to people that tell us this is what Jesus God sent, right? In Exodus 21, 20 and 21. So Exodus 21, verse 20, 21. And if a man beats his male or female slave with a rod so that he dies under his hand, he shall be punished. Notwithstanding, if he remains alive a day or two, he shall not be punished for he is his property. Right? He's saying that if a man beats a slave who only lives a day, you put him in the ER, lives a day, you can't punish him because that's his property. I don't believe that's from God. That's from some slave owner trying to justify some kind of beatings, right? I was wondering where you're going with that. Like, yeah. Where you going with this? No, <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm keeping it real. This this stuff has been added and changed, right? Yeah, I, I agree with that 100%. So what we have here is the Quran, unchanged, un altered words, not the words of Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, not the words of his companions, not disciples, not apostles, not unknown, unknown Koenig speaking Greek authors, no, the words of Allah, that creator that sent this for you, this is yours brother, this is a free gift, we don't want money from you, we're not trying to, we're not trying to make a living here, we're out here connecting people like you to your creator, the connection that's already there, that's why we call it reverting, you're just going back to your natural state, right? So you believe in Allah. So let me ask you this. Excellent. <clears throat> you know, you, you know, a, a lot of times the news is just propaganda and spread lies. But agreed. Whenever you see someone like I watch CNN, and then it shows 
people in the in, in that, that practice um, Islam. Islam, they treat the women bad over there. What sure. is that about? Let me tell you, CNN, Fox, uh, MSNBC, these are all outlets trying to get attention, mm -hmm. right? They're going to show you what they want to show you to get their ratings. Mm -hmm. If they show you Muslims treating their mothers really well and their wives really well and their sisters really well, you, you think that's going to bring ratings? That's not going to bring ratings, right? So think of it this way. And when I'm in Pakistan and I'm in uh, Saudi and I'm traveling and I watch news sources to look at what's going on in America, it looks way different than reality. Right? When you look at the, the, the image of, for example, Mexicans on, on TV, the image of African Americans, the image of Muslims, it's, it's made out to develop fear. It's made out to develop ratings. Even till today, look at every Hollywood movie, the bad guy's German. <laughs> Some kind of, you know, uh, Nazi-ish outfit and, you know, the, even lately, like with Marvel and all of that, they'll, they'll hydra, but they'll try to model that. Why? Because they got to make a bad guy, right? But look, we got Muslim sisters out here sitting right there. We got a Muslim sister right here. Go and ask her, right? She's sitting right there. Go and ask her. How do... Your husband, how does your husband treat you? How does your father treat you? How does your son treat you? How does Islam honor you as a Muslim woman, right? Let me understand this. And I know there's probably a good reason behind it. Go for why it. do they have to why they require it? Excellent, great question, right? When you look at the Bible itself, you find verses about hijab, the covering, right? Let me show it to you, right? But what happens is in the Western society, they just they just don't do it anymore, right? They just left it. But in Islam, we stay true to, to it. We hold true to the word, right? Got too many uh, too many markings, but I'm gonna find it for you, bro. I got you, right? First Corinthians chapter 11 verses 5 to 10 in the Bible, right? But every woman who prays or prophesies with her head uncovered dishonors her head. And that is one and the same as if her head to be shaved. For if a woman is not covered, let her head be sworn. But if it is shameful for a woman to have her head torn or shaved, let her be covered. Right? Now this is telling you to cover. But when is the last time you saw all these Christian women, who do you see covered? This is the New Testament. It's not even like talking about the Old Testament, right? What happens is Allah honors the woman to be known as modest women by being covered. Let's say you got a wife, right? You want some horny young dudes trying to, you know, pop a, you, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to be real with you, bro. I'm not going to sugarcoat this stuff, right? You don't want that. You're an honorable man. Exactly. It's, it, it shows honor to the woman and it does not make her a, a, a object of man's lust. And it protects a man from being tempted. Like now in America, what do we have? We have the highest rape rates in the world. We have the highest molestation rate. Go Google the stats, right? You don't see that in Muslim countries. Why? Because Muslim countries, we don't play like that. Our women are protected and honored. Our women honor themselves. Here what happens? You, you, they take women and they tell them, we're going to liberate you. But what does it mean liberate you? It doesn't mean we're going to give you education. No, no. They mean we're going to take your clothes off and we're going to use you for marketing. Right? And then what happens? You get these young guys that start to subjectify a woman as an object of sexual desire. Right? So when you see a woman walking around Balboa Park with nothing but this and a little bit of this, you don't think about, I wonder how her personality is. You're trying to guess whether that's 36 Ds or what, right? I'm going to be real, so don't get offended, right? Right? This is what Islam stops. It honors that woman. It protects the man. Right? That's why our women are covered. How come you use the statement from the Bible to justify your statement? Excellent, because Christians, they show us the Bible and they tell us this is the words of God and they say they live by this. And when we show them the same Bible, they deny it. Right? So we as Muslims, we live by the Quran. The Quran tells us that the, the order of hijab in Surah Al-Ahzab is there so you can know this woman is an honorable woman. So she is protected and then men are not tempted. Right? That temptation begins with the look. Right? You look at something, it begins the temptation. In Islam, when you see a woman covered up, you can't see her body, you can't see her figure, you can't see, you can't even see her face. You have to now deal with her from her intellect. Right? 
what she talks about, her intelligence is how you honor her. That's Islam for you. So let me answer this. You know, there's a lot of controversy about books that are not in the Bible, but like the book exactly. of Enoch, the book of Egyptian. Yeah, then you got the, the Gospel of Barnabas, you got the Gospel of Mary Magdalene, you got even the Gospel of Judas, yeah. Are those in the Quran or no? We don't have anything like that. The Quran is the words of Allah exactly revealed to the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, memorized letter by letter, word by word, right? Now I'm going to show you something. We're going to do a practical demonstration, right? The Quran, no matter where you get one, it's 114 chapters, begins with Surah Al-Fatiha and with Surah Al-Nas. These all together. We don't have any missing chapters. We don't have any missing verses. What is to be in the Quran is in the Quran, right? Now, let me show you how beautifully it's preserved, right? I don't know these brothers. I don't know these brothers. I do know these brothers. These are the brothers that I know, all right? So I'm going to pick a brother that I know. Mishal, all right, this brother I know him, right? And I'm gonna have you pick. These are Muslim brothers here. I, have I ever met you before today? Never met you, first time. Pick one of them. I'm gonna let you pick. Just pick one. It's all right. You'll know this one, right? This one, Mishal, Taal, Zakallah Khair. Open the first chapter. Oh yeah. I thought you were gonna test my skill, man. I know. I got you, bro. I got you. Everybody, knows. we got brothers that have memorized the whole Quran, you can test them anywhere, right? So, Surah Al Fatiha, right? Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen in Arabic. I'm going to have them recite it word by word, letter by letter, right? In Arabic, right? You ready? Yes. Who do you want to go first? We'll let him go first. Or? You go first, brother. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين الله أكبر right now look at that right these brothers you ever met each other before? No. Never, right? All Muslims, you will find at least some part of the Quran with memorized. Then you got brothers like him sitting back here that memorized the whole Quran, letter by letter, word by word, verse by verse. We could, we, we can get any part of the Quran, tell him read from here, he'll start reading, right? So with that, we never have an issue of a book missing or a verse missing. We memorize it. We got manuscripts that are carbon dated to the lifetime of the Prophet, peace be upon him, that have the Quran. We can read it from that. We can read it from memory. And like that, we got millions today alive around the world. You go to Pakistan, you go to Indonesia, Malaysia, Egypt, Saudi, you go to Africa, you go to in Russia, you, in America, we got people walking around memorizing the whole Quran. So we never have that fear of somebody trying to take something out or in, because you got a million people that be like, uh, 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 you missed the verse, we got you. You feel me? So you said this is the word of the Prophet. Of Allah. Allah. Revealed to the Prophet. So. Peace be upon you. The verses in here, are they going to be similar to the verses in there? So the message, the core message is going to be the same of all prophets. The problem here in the Bible, as we've already discussed, is you have so many authors that are unknown, that wrote things with their own hands and attributed it to God. Right. You have some things that are going to be from the message of Jesus that you will find in the Quran. But you're going to find a lot that's been changed, like Lot having sex with his daughters and all that kind of stuff. We don't believe in all that nonsense. He's called a righteous man. How a righteous man going to get that drunk and have sex with his own daughters twice? Different daughters, right? We don't believe those those mistakes we leave. How do we know what's preserved or not? This is the judge. This is the Quran. So whatever is there and here that works together, we believe in it. Whatever is there and doesn't work with here, we reject it as man-made. So, you believe in Allah? I'm sorry? Is he a servant of God? God. But in the Bible, let, let me show you, 
Let me show you in the Bible here. In Acts, let, let me show you. Let me show you from the Bible. Take a look at it. Okay, but here it says the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and God of our, the God of our fathers, glorified His servant Jesus. His servant. And Jesus came like a servant did, did here. You, okay, so, 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 was he a servant? Was he a servant? Okay, was he a servant, or was he God at the time he was here? You can't answer your own Bible. Have a good day. You see me? You see this, right? This is the kind of thing we do with Christians. No, no, they don't even read their own Bible. That's the problem. We're showing them from the Bible, right? From the Bible. Show me a single verse that God says clearly that Jesus is God, right? They're going to get some ambiguous words here and there. I am and the word and this. They'll never have a clear verse for it. But I can show you clear verses that show that Jesus was a servant of God, that he worshiped God, that he prayed to God, that he put his hand on the ground and worshiped as Muslims worship. Okay? That's why we keep our message preserved. We don't change, update, add, subtract, because we want to keep that true message. All right. So, you believe in God. The one Allah, the one creator, right? That sent the messengers. You believe in the messengers, right? You are a Muslim. No, really. We are, that's what a Muslim is, right? We're going to do your testimony of faith. You don't believe Jesus is God, right? You know, I, when you when you raised in a Baptist or an African Methodist church yeah. and those things are going to talk to you all those years. I feel you. But, you know, as you get older, you start to question things. Right. You know? Especially with the internet and all, this, all these manuscripts that are coming out. And, exactly. You know, that you start exactly. to question things. So, you know. If you look in the Bible, for example, even with the corruptions and all that, right, you will find that in Exodus 4.22, it says, then you shall say to Pharaoh, thus says the Lord, Israel is my son, my firstborn. So you see, Israel, which is Jacob, Yaqub, is called the firstborn son of God here, right? But they don't take him. They're like, oh, that's just a figure of speech, right? You no, keep going. Heard that verse before. See, that's the thing. All them preachers, they hide these verses. I used to go to Bible studies and they try to skip over and I was like, hey, hey, excuse me, I got a question. And they kicked me out. I've been kicked out of many a churches growing up because, of, yeah, yeah, I, I wasn't raised amongst Muslims, right? If brothers see my videos about my past, I was raised with all non-Muslims. My friends were Catholics, Protestants, everything. I used to go to Wednesday's church Bible studies at Horizon by Balboa and Genesee. I used to go to the church, The Rock in Linda Vista. I used to go to the, you know, Catholic, every kind of uh, quinceaneras and all that stuff, right? And when I would study the Bible, when I would actually read and I would ask these questions, they would be like, don't ask, just, just believe, don't ask. It's the mystery of the Trinity, don't ask. You see that lady right now? She couldn't answer the Bible. She just wants to speak over you, right? Look right here, 2 Samuel 6, 23. Therefore, I uh, know here, so I'm sorry, 7, 13, 14. He shall build the house for my name and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. I will be his father and he shall be my son. This is about Solomon, mm -hmm. Old Testament, mm -hmm. right? Solomon is called the son. Let's look at David. In the Psalms of David, Old Testament still. Mm -hmm. Jesus is not even born yet. You have the Psalms of David, Psalms 1, verse 7. I will declare the, de the decree. David is saying, I will declare the decree. Mm -hmm. The Lord has said to me, you are my son. Today I have begotten you. Mm -hmm. Right? Go home and look at this, right? Now what happens is, you got Ephraim, the son of God, you got Adam being called the son of God. All of those Christians will be like, you know what? That's a metaphor. That's just a statement. Even though David is saying that the Lord said to me that I have begotten you. Oh, that's just a term in Hebrew. But when it came to Jesus, they try to mix it up. Well, there's also a uh, verse here, and I don't remember where it was. It tells a story, and then it says, and this too is an allegory, which means it's a lie. Exactly. So I'm like, oh, and, it, and there, are, confusing, there, you know? there are many verses, even in the New Testament, that clearly show that we don't even know who wrote these books. Right? I mean, I'll give you an example, right? This is a, a study Bible, right? A study, this, this, is mean, this is a Christian evangelical preacher Bible something, study Bible, right? And this is what they prepare their preachers with, right? If you go to Hebrews, it says the author of Hebrews is unknown. We don't even know who wrote these. How are we going to say this is the Word of God, right? Look at this. Uh, 
in the Bible, right? But of that day, the hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. He didn't say the Son on earth, no Holy Ghost, nothing. Nobody knows the day of judgment when it is except the Father, right? Jesus doesn't know. If Jesus is God, if He's a part of God, then He would know. Even in His, in, even in his commentary, because when Jesus spoke these words to the disciples, He had no knowledge of the date and the time of His return. So how can you say He's God, right? This is why you see that lady or all these people, even Mr. Wood, once he gets homework and once he gets hit, they never want to come back here, right? Why? We're here every time. I've been coming out here for years, same day, same time, same back channel, all that, right? Because we believe in what we believe in, right? So now we're going to do... Go ahead. Explain again how this word was derived. Excellent. So the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, he was, and, and I'll give you a link about his life. I'm teaching it so you can follow along here in San Diego. Yeah. All right, you can come visit us in the mosque. You can be with us, right? So he was revealed a message. The, the angel Gabriel, Jibreel, he came, he brought that message. And the Prophet, peace be upon him, he would recite those verses. Not his words. Sometimes they would address him. Sometimes they would censure him. right? So here, Allah's words were revealed to the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, like his words were revealed to Jesus and Moses and David, peace and blessings be upon all of them, right? He would recite them. And then there's companions, they would memorize, like these brothers you saw, memorize, and they would write them down. Now what about all these scrolls they find, like the death scrolls, right. and they end up in the Bible? How, where does that fit into this? So those Dead Sea Scrolls are for the Old Testament, and many of those still contradict what we find printed in the Old Testament. Many have not even been, parts of those have not even been re released yet, the Israeli government's holding them, right? Those are all Old Testament and, and earlier texts. None of those are even from the time of Moses, peace be upon him. None of them are from the time of Jesus, peace be upon him. Those are all written by people we don't know, right? What we have is the final messenger message preserved and, and authorized to be the final message till the day of judgment, right? So anything in those earlier texts, we, we, we judge them by the final text. So whatever we find there that's in line with the Quran, then we can accept it. Anything we find there that's not, because we don't know who wrote those, right? Even the Dead Sea Scrolls, we don't know the authors, right? It's the earliest manuscripts of the Old Testament. But the earliest manuscripts of the New Testament, in fact, I have one. See, this one has the Greek of the New Testament. Okay, the Old Testament, is in Hebrew, but the New Testament, the earlier manuscripts are not in Jesus' language, Aramaic, peace and blessings be upon him, they're in Greek. So this one looks at the Greek, two popular English translations, and also which Greek manuscript those verses are in. And if you look at popular verses like John 10.30, that people use to try to justify Jesus being God, the Father and I are one. If you look at it, it's missing from the vast majority of the early manuscripts. And that's why the NSAB and the New International Version, they have taken out verses knowing that there were fabrications in what was published under King James Version, right? But in the Quran, we don't have any of that. Whatever is there, is there. From the beginning, Surah Al-Fatiha to Surah Al-Nas. Memorized, written, preserved. So anything the earlier scriptures have, we weigh it against what's in the final testament. Make sense? Yeah, makes sense. All right. So, you believe in Allah? Yeah, I believe in God. Yeah. And you believe in the messengers? Mm -hmm. You believe in the messenger Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him? Mm -hmm. You believe Jesus was a messenger of God and a prophet of God? You're a Muslim, right? We'll do your testimony of faith, you get to know the brothers, we'll keep in touch, and then you can ask all your questions and learn in a, in a, 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 a manner to develop you in the religion. Good? All right. So, when you say this, you're going to be a Muslim as you are inside, outside. All right? Let's not do this with my wife. Right. I'm at the theater. I'll no problem. Talk to her first. But I would be one time to give you my number and let's reconnect. Excellent. My daughter performs. No the problem. Right here, so let, let me we don't pressure first. anybody. Take your time. But you've already got the belief, right? All you got to do is the testimony and you're a Muslim. Your curiosity. Is uh, Brother Mujahid. 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 Let me give you 
uh, have you give your number to this brother here. So brother's ready, but he wants to uh, save uh, his, his wife is here. So he's already believed in Allah. He already believes in the Prophet. We already went through all that. But uh, here's his number. Inshallah, you will uh, keep in touch with him. Inshallah. All right. You have the Quran, read up. But if you're ready, we're ready to do the testimony. All right. Whenever you're ready, no pressure. Okay, so I mean, it's going to be interesting to read because, you know, there's a lot, like I said, the, the internet is exposing a lot of stuff. That's true. A lot of information is coming out that we don't have, but you, you have a strong point because you're bringing up verses in it that no pastor reads. Right, mm -hmm. exactly. That's the first time I've seen that one. Yeah. I, got, I, got, I got tons of them. Mm -hmm. You can see. <laughs> and that's red flag. Right. Yeah. right. And I, the Quran, know, I, firmly, I firmly believe that, like you said, that was written to control people. Yep. Yeah. And, and unfortunately, people that were slaves or they wanted to stand it's true. Country. And that's right. just, you know, what I believe. And I know. My right. grandkids are Muslim. Oh, mashallah. Allah, so you're joining your grandkids in the same faith then. Come on. Look, the Quran, we read the whole thing, not just regularly on our own, but as a community and Ramadan, when the month of fasting comes, the one who leads the prayer reads that we hear the whole Quran. Well, let's talk about this fasting thing. Yeah. I'm fat. Right. I like to eat. I'm, I'm with you. <laughs> I can relate, brother. <laughs> Look, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. When you fast, I guarantee you, not only will you physically feel better, spiritually you feel better, right? Everything you take in steps, right? Look, you already have the belief. You already have Muslim family, right? You should say the testimony, you're a Muslim. Then read, grow, ask. Nobody's going to force anything on you, right? You want to do the testimony? Uh, I gotta talk to my wife first. All right, talk to your wife. Because her dad was one of, he was a he was a big pastor in the AM look, church and all that stuff. I feel you. But look, this is something that's between you and you. Don't, you don't even have to bring this up right now, right? This is something that you already have in your heart. You're already a Muslim. You already believe in Allah. You already believe in the prophets. You've already seen the deceptions of the Bible. You've already seen the truth of the Quran, the preservation of the Quran. This is between you and Allah, not anybody else. Right? Have a conversation, but don't let it, don't let it drag on. Because right. shaitan, he likes to procrastinate. You know? You feel me? Yeah. Well, thank you guys very much. Appreciate it, brother. All right, Appreciate we'll be, it. we'll be waiting. We've got your number. We'll keep in touch. Gentlemen. كل الخلائق حاضرة كل السعائر بادية آمنت أن الآخرة لا بد يوما آتية كل الخلائق حاضرة كل السعائر بادية